everyone, what's up and welcome back to another video. Today I'm gonna to share with you my zero dollar freezer meal prep. So you're probably thinking, how does this cost zero dollars? Why is she freezer meal prepping? I don't understand. Let me just give you a little explanation. What I'm doing is going through my pantry and finding items that I either need to use up or things that I can make and freeze ahead. Now I know my future schedule is going to get super hectic, so anything that I can pre-make ahead to save me time in the future months is an A++ on my side. So I'm using a couple of my extra free hours this week to prep ahead, and I'm super excited with the things that I've made, and I can't wait to share them with you. You will probably have all the ingredients on hand to make these freezer meal prep ahead ideas at your house because they're just easy pantry staples that I feel like everyone has. And if you don't have them on hand, you can go to your local grocery store and purchase them. So let's jump into the video and I'll share with you all the things that I am prepping to stick in my freezer to make my life super easy in the next coming months. Recipe number one. I actually have so many grits. Let me show you. Well, yes, I do have three boxes of grits and two of them are open. So I bought these a lot last fall and winter when I was going through them a lot more than oatmeal, but I feel like I only like grits now when they're like warm and it's very hot out, so I haven't been using them. So what I'm going to do is cook these up and freezer prep them and then I'm going to make them into french fries. So fingers crossed this works. If you hear any thunder and lightning, we are getting a little bit of a storm right now. I just posted on my Instagram stories. It's monsoon season here, which means during the day we have no clouds. It's 100 degrees, perfectly sunny, and then at night we get thunderstorms, which honestly, there's nothing better to me. So. I'm going to actually just do this box of grits. I have six cups of water that I'm going to cook up there really quick, but that's barely going to make a dent in my grits because it takes a cup and a half of these um, to make six cups. So we're not gonna get through many of these, but maybe I'll make two batches and then freeze them, but let me show you what I'm doing. Seasonings are not just gonna be salt. I'm gonna amp up the flavor a little bit and put some parsley flakes, garlic salt, and onion powder like I would with mashed potato fries. they thicken up nice they have about four minutes left and then I did want to show you I'm going to do a second batch same seasonings same seasonings and I did get rid of one of my boxes of grits so now I have like a half a one and a half so I don't think I'll make all of these because we're only the two people and I feel like that's gonna be a lot of cooked grits but if we like these I will probably um, whip these up and have them in the freezer to go I did want to go ahead and show you what these look like when they were frozen and then I popped them into the air fryer. I did put them in my air fryer at 400 degrees for 18 minutes, which seems like a lot, but they're basically always frozen. I did let them sit on my counter and defrost for about an hour, so they're like a little bit easier to work with. Um, you could also sit them in your refrigerator overnight. You don't have to freeze these if you don't want to. They would be more like a mashed potato fry. But oh my goodness, this is the best idea I've ever had in my entire life. They are so good. They're like a hash brown, but with grits. And they are just super crunchy on the outside and really delicious in the inside. And I served them with ketchup and 
they are so good i cannot wait for you guys to try these and tag me over on instagram when you do and let me know what you think and honestly any seasoning would taste so good with these so i did go ahead and also make some pancakes i feel like pancakes are like a freezer staple um, I just used some flour leftover, baking soda, baking powder, too many bananas, some raisins, maple syrup instead of um, sugar, and then some cinnamon, of course. And when I say mini bananas, I mean mini bananas. But they're really sweet, and they're starchier than a normal banana. I got them at a um, farmer's market or a, like a little on the like side road stand place over in California. Love, love, love. So I did go ahead and add raisins, and I found some almond milk. I added a little bit of that and I added a little bit of water and then mixed these up and made a huge batch of pancakes. I had to make some kind of bean to put in my freezer. I'm gonna be honest with you. I've had these pinto beans for so long. I'm gonna add onion powder and paprika to them, put them in my Instant Pot, and I just pulled a recipe off of Pinterest, so I rinsed my beans, um, got the dirt off. There was a couple rocks in my beans. I've never had that before. And if you look here, there's also a couple black beans in the mix, but I picked those out. <laughs> Anyways, put water in them, popped them in my Instant Pot for 30 minutes. I love homemade instant pot beans over canned beans, but I have to admit, even though it's cheaper, even though it's easier, I'm a little bit lazy. Sometimes I just need to pull a can of beans off the shelf and not make beans. So my goal for the winter coming ahead before we move is to have like all my beans made. I'll probably use them before we move because I really don't want to move beans across the city. But anyways, and then I'll have them all made and then I can just kind of go through my stockpile of beans. So I'm actually going to make some pizza crust because I have a bunch of flour I'd like to use up. So I will put the recipe down in the description box below for this, but you do have to let it sit for at least three hours. I use um, fast acting instant yeast so three hours is usually perfect but i'm going to mix this all up i have some water here and i'm going to use this spicy queso nutritional yeast i will link this down below it's on amazon and it is so good but it just adds a lot of flavor to the crust but i'm going to let these sit and then i will put, like par bake the crust in the oven and then pop them into the freezer as well I know for many of you who are like precision bakers, this probably is going to give you complete anxiety watching me measure, but I have made this bread so many times that I could make it in my sleep. I could make it blindfolded. I just throw stuff in a bowl and mix it up and voila, it turns out. So this is actually the same recipe if you had not noticed, of the bread recipe that I always use. It's like three ingredients. Um, if you add enough yeast to it, it's like the perfect pizza dough crust because even if you pre-bake it for a little bit, pop it in the freezer, it's nice and chewy and it's so delicious. I love mixing and chopping. I think I went into the wrong like career field because when I come home at night, that's like all I want to do. And that's why like I continue to do YouTube because I love throwing stuff in a bowl and mixing it with a spoon and I love putting stuff on a cutting board and chopping it with a knife. So here we have it sitting for about three hours and then I put some flour onto my countertop. If you don't wanna do this, you don't have to. You can also do it in the bowl. Again, I just like feeling things with my hands and I don't mind cleaning my counter. It is rather sticky because yes, yeast. And it was also like a stickier day, not as dry as normal. Bread is kind of fickle, so sometimes it's stickier, sometimes it's drier. It also depends on the seasonings you add. It's just kind of, it is what it is, but I'll leave some recipe videos down below that I've made with different styles of bread so you can check them out, different flavors. But since this bread is a little bit fickle and you don't want it to be tough, 
I handle it very carefully. I do add a bunch of flour when I do my pizza crust because I find that it still stays sticky and chewy when I bake it, but I'm not like handling it very rough. I'm just kind of, it looks like I'm not being delicate, but I promise that I am. And then I roll it out into four like personal style pan pizzas, pop it in the oven at like 400 degrees for, I don't know, I think seven, eight minutes but this is just delicious. You don't have to make this ahead of time, but it does save a lot of time because then obviously all you have to do is throw on the toppings and eat it. You don't have to wait for it to sit on your counter for a little while. If they still look a little bit doughy, it's because they are. I only bake these for about eight minutes and then I freeze them and then I pull them out. They are defrosted and they're soft and then I put them back into the oven. So I actually am going to store these with parchment paper in between and then just in a giant gallon Ziploc bag. I find that's the best way to keep them and they stay for about six months in your freezer. So hooray for pizza crust being made and all I have to do is top them and they're ready to go. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you really enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you give it a big thumbs up and drop your freezer meal prep ideas down in the description box below. I know I didn't do a ton of them today because like I said, I was just going through my pantry and finding things that I could utilize to make ahead, but I would love to do a couple more of these videos in the next month or so. So give me some ideas of things that you freezer prep ahead and why you freezer prep them. What makes your life so convenient about the items that you choose to freezer prep because I'm thinking about doing like tomato sauce and more beans and some soups. So that way coming into the fall days when I'm really busy and I come home from work really late, I can just pull something out, defrost it, and we're good to go. So again, thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you really liked it and I'll see you in my next one very soon. Bye-bye.